Hey guys, it's design time again. So, what's this PCB about here? Probably many of you have seen these ones. These PCBs here. These are called EGS002 and this PCB what you see here consists of the EGS8010 SPVM driver chip and, the, and two of the IR2113 MOSFET driver chips. Well, the EGS8010 is not a driver, it is an ASIC that incorporates complete regulation for current for voltage, frequency, and this is the, 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 the heart of the pure sign inverter generation. So these things, what you see here in combination with an external power circuitry, and will give you a, a beautiful sine wave inverter, pure sine wave inverter. This thing, as you can see here, this is the standard one. There are other ones too. This one has a 555 additional on it to the comparators, to the addition to the two comparators. I do not know what the 555 does. Then we have this one, but the most expensive one. This thing costs $21, 21 euros plus shipping, only because it has the switch here that breaks every option out, that, that fans out every option, and you can set it to variable output frequency too, from between uh, 0 to 100 or 0 to 400, and this is why I used it. Anyway, yeah, I was desperate and, and bought it. It works. But it's far too expensive. Well, in if you compare the other ones, this cost a few dollars. This cost twenty one euros, yeah, plus shipping, and it's nothing more than the additional dip switch here that you can set all the options that the eighty ten gives you. Well, of course, it would not be a design time when I would not have one of my own PCBs to present you. Yeah, this is a future project, similar to the one with the dip switches here, but smaller. And completely in my hand. I can do with that what I want, and I can lay out it how I want, and change the design how I want. But instead of dip switches, I have here a header that either I can use with jumpers or uh, flat cable header and yeah, opa, sorry, and use it with switches, etc. But anyway, this is something, uh, uh, this is a future project. I do not want to say more. But the video is not about these things. The video, the design I made in this video is about testing these things. These things, these PCBs die quite fast or have the idiotropy to, yeah, to misbehave once in a while. And um, they are not that easy to test because you have a lot of parameters to set. And this is where ta -ta -ta -ta, PCB way comes. And this is where the black beauty comes. So what is the black beauty? The black beauty is this PCB. Look at that. Isn't it pretty? Whoa. Very nice. A beautiful matte black PCB. 
This is where I'm telling you, this is the black beauty. It's one of the most beautiful PCBs I received from PCB way. Yeah. Look at that. I don't know why I did it black. I just wanted to test their black matte options. Every PCB has a numbering when I get it. This means it's serious zero PCB one. So PCB way is the sponsor of the PC for the PCBs. What you see in this video, these beautiful PCBs. Thank you very much, PCB way. Uh, PCB way uh, is not only producing great PCBs, beautiful PCBs like this black beauty. You know what is Black Beauty remembers me? Black Beauty, there was in the 70s, there was a series, a family series called The Story of the Black Beauty from BBC, for an English series. I don't know, it was with a black horse. I was sitting in front of the TV and I was watching it as a child. Anyway, but nothing to do with that. Look at that again. Isn't that nice? Look at that. Immaculate. Perfect. Thank you, PCB Way. So, PCB Way doesn't only make uh, PCBs and uh, beautiful, perfect PCBs, but uh, and uh, assembly. They also, in the last years, started with CNC machining and 3D printing with a lot of materials. Uh, they even opened a gift shop with some really, really beautiful modules there. And honestly, I like from there one of their clocks. It is a imitation of a Nixie clock with a TFT displays. I really like that. So thank you again, PCB Way. Give them a try. Go to their website and see what they can offer. You will see that what I'm saying is true. Okay, but this is how this thing looks populated. Of course, it has to be a little bit more over-engineered as always. On the PCB, you have the socket for, the, for this one. Let me put one on it. Like that. You have the power supply that gives the 5 volts from 12 volt a Walmart, a Walmart uh, PSU. And then you have four LEDs, green LEDs, that are the uh, driver outputs to the four to the uh, four MOSFETs or MOSFETs pairs of the full bridge. A yellow one that signalizes that fan is on. And the red one that is on the EGS002 itself. You can, you have uh, on the EGS02, you have inputs for current feedback, voltage feedback, and temperature field feedback. All of these have dedicated values. All of these three have dedicated values that the ASIC, the 8010, EGS8010, uh, interprets for normal operation, overcurrent, over voltage, over temperature, blah, blah. Here you see the combinations. For example, voltage feedback, three volts, that means between 265 and 315 is normal operation. And these four LEDs would be green, light green. Yeah, they light green because they are switching so fast that you cannot see that it is a switched output, not a steady output. And the red on the EGS board is on. Otherwise, if an error condition is there, the red EGS LED flashes four times. If it is an under voltage, if it is an over voltage, 
uh, you have three times and all the greens, the four LEDs, the greens are, are off. Mm -hmm. I have to be careful what I'm saying here because I did that quite a while ago and I have to read what I wrote. Anyway, uh, current feedback, you have the same similar conditions, but a little bit different. That means with that tester here, you can set with the potentiometers, trim pots, and you can see there are this finger, I don't know what, how they call them. They're easy to turn. You don't need a screwdriver and nothing. You can set the conditions to test the test conditions for the EGS for both, for all the three inputs, feedback input inputs, current, voltage, voltage and temperature. And here you see what you are setting. Additionally, here you have outputs where you can connect a scope. Then you can see the fundamental and unipolar. Unipolar, unipolar it's called here. Yeah. Uh, traces. So this is how it looks. Of course, and it is a little bit of engineer, but I want to see at the same time what is set, not to have to switch from one volt from one input to the other. This is how it looks on the back. And yes, these are not coils. I just didn't want it to cut the cables. Perhaps I can use it as long as there are, because if I cut them, this is quite complicated to solder them again. This is how it looks on the back. This is the first version. The actual version that I have at the moment is an, a, a, one that I added quite a few things more. I will show you that later on a, in a 3D, as a 3D uh, digital image, because I didn't make this PCB yet. But let's have a look how this thing works and how it looks. So, I connected it to the 12 volts. Let's turn it on, Dang, 5 volt signaling, and you see here the color of the green LEDs is, in my eyes, when I do not look through the camera, the same. <laughs> but seems that the camera can distinguish the PVM, because as I said, these are post output and not steady outputs, but let's do it like that. This looks much better much better. This is how it looks. And here I have already preset the normal voltages for the normal condition, normal working condition of the EGS. 3 volt for the uh, for the temperature feedback, 3 volt for the voltage feedback and under 0 0.5 volts for the for the current feedback. For example, the as you can read here, the temperature feedback 3 volt is normal and between 3.4 3.4 with uh, no, 3.4 and 4 volts the fan would start. Let's have a look. Mm -hmm. That's the top. Let's go 3.4, check, and the fan starts. That's the yellow LED. And um, what does I say here? Let this on. And over temperature, the EGS LED will flash five times and the green ones will go off. Um, I don't know, let's go over temperature. I don't know where, the, oh. This, we have this condition now. Five time flashing the LED on the EGS and the green output LEDs are off. So the driver, or the drivers to the MOSFETs are cut off. Let's go back.
we have a normal condition, but it's a little bit hot, so the fan is running. Let's go down to 3 volts, so the fan will cut off. So this is just an example. Same is with the voltage feedback and the current feedback. And as you can see here, no you cannot see, because of course we are out of focus again. As you can see here, everything is explained. You don't even need the, the data sheet. You see what is necessary here and you can test it. With that easy assembly here, you can completely test the EGS board. And it's a black beauty. So, I don't know what to say more about that. I hope you like it. Just if you like my videos, if you like my content, my designs, what I'm showing you, please push the like button, subscribe to my channel, please. Uh, hit the bell button, ring the bell. All this helps my channel to grow. Yeah, and I have a lot of things to show you more. Yeah, by the way, why I did all this? Just to, because I'm, I want to play with inverters? No, no, no. The reason why I did all this is because, as I said in one of my previous videos, I don't know which one, I'm planning an AC uh, power supply that goes from up to 380 volts, probably down to 10 volts, current regulated, one kilowatt, and the best thing, uh, frequency adjustable between zero and 400 hertz. You can you you can test everything. You can test uh, aviation equipment with that, with the 400 hertz or 100 hertz. So this is how it looks. I think it's not that bad. It's cheap. The um, all the design files you would need to make the PCBs and populate them are available on request. Thank you for watching. Thank you PCBWay for the beautiful PCBs. And have a nice day. Cheers guys. And of course I said goodbye without showing you the 3D image of the new PCB. This is a brand spanking fresh one from today. They're not big changes, but they are mostly different arrangement here, for example. So I can fit better the larger EGS boards like mine or the other one with the uh, with the dip switches. This is how it looks on the back. And again on the front. So, now I'm finished. Have a good day, guys. Cheers. Bye.